Hello there everybody, Sounds Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to yet another episode of the Model Railway News. I wanted to kick off today by just saying I hope you're all doing well, staying safe, staying healthy during these troubled times. Obviously as well as your physical health, mental health is pretty important at this point as well. So if you are at home and you haven't got anybody or if you're feeling a little bit lonely, please do act. Please don't just sit at home and be miserable. There are one or two things you can do. You can join an online forum. There are plenty for model railways so you can connect with like-minded people. Uh, YouTube channels like mine are putting up content most days. Some of them have streams that you can chat in if you like. And also I'm going to be available by email so if you need a chat just please get in touch. I have got a lot of emails recently. I'm a bit unindated but I am doing my absolute best. So seriously folks stay safe and obviously uh, try to keep yourself happy as much as you possibly can. Okay so we've got some news quite a lot this month actually considering so enjoy it I hope you do and let's get started with a little bit from Hornby there haven't been a great many new arrivals this month for obvious reasons but there are one or two new interesting things to talk about the first thing is the stay at home Hornby hamper which is a brand new product they must have just thrown this together so kudos to Hornby for actually being able to put this together so quickly it's a 200 pound hamper which gets you quite a lot of stuff so you get a loco you get a train set basically so you get a loco rolling stock track including a set of points in the siding which is always a great great feature in a train set I think obviously you get a controller but you also get station scenery buildings fences trees foliage and even people so you get figures with this one so if you're looking to actually start a model railway this is a fantastic idea and obviously the price seems pretty reasonable for all of that stuff really good indeed they've also got some new mark threes in stock as well i don't know if they're actually in stock but they might be due before this video goes out uh, and there are more different versions to follow in may which is quite interesting if you'd like to read more about the project obviously it's not my area of expertise if you want to read more the engine shed blog from hornby does tell you more so i'll probably put a link for that in the description if you like they also have the 2020 centenary wagon due in stock pretty soon which is obviously quite a, a minor release but it might be something that people are looking forward to because it's obviously something quite special there is quite a lot more to see though on the latest Hornby engine shed blogs. Most importantly, or most interestingly perhaps, there are lots and lots of updates on the forthcoming Coronation Scott coaches that Hornby are producing brand new. So they've been in development since the beginning of 2016 according to the blog, which is an incredibly long time isn't it? It's been on and off since then, but either way still a really long time. They've included lots of details on the research project as you can see and it does seem that the project was incredibly lengthy and quite tricky as well quite a lot of obstacles to get over as you can see here there's also some great photos of some unpainted samples which are looking really really good they've included detailed cad images of the longer 65 foot i believe they are coaches and there's a sample for that as well as you can see and they've also revealed some decoration guides which are fantastic obviously because they show you more or less what the models are going to look like and you can imagine it a little bit better can't you fascinating that it's very exhaustive that blog post and i can highly recommend reading it so like i say do check it out and they've also revealed some decoration guides for the remaining a2 slash threes we saw one of them last month but i think all of the rest of them are being shown now which again is just fantastic because we get a really good idea now of what these models are going to look like uh, in some way i suppose and yeah it's just great i'm really glad that hornby have started to do this it's very interesting to look at all this stuff since getting interested in O-Gage, I thought I might just start covering one or two of the more interesting projects going on in O-Gage. So I wanted to mention one from Dapol because they have a brand new steam loco out in O-Gage. It is the 14XX, there's some photos here as you can see, as well as the 48XX and 58XX variants. It is now in stock apparently, and I happen to know, please don't ask me how I know, but I happen to know that they are absolutely exquisite models, probably one of the best I've ever seen. Like, don't ask me how I know, I, it's, just, it's just a thought at this minute. It's just a, a possible guess as to how they might turn out, but do stay tuned if you want to learn more about those. And I'll put some links in the description if you'd like to check them out for yourself. Very, very interesting stuff. Next up then, in partnership with Dapol, Rails of Sheffield have announced yet another interesting 3D printed van. More specifically, it's another 16 foot covered goods wagon. This time it's the early SECR version, which apparently a lot of people have been requesting. And that's not surprising, obviously, given the sort of pre-grouping and more specifically SECR craze that's been going on at the moment. A lot of the pre-orders have been selling out. So if you're interested in picking up one or two of those, do check those out before it's too late. 
I've also received an email update from KR Models talking about their two main models that they're producing, the GT3 gas turbine and also the Fell, which is a really, really interesting looking model. Uh, apparently, as far as the GT3 is concerned, they're only about a month behind on the original schedule, which is amazing, obviously, considering what's been happening in China and throughout the world in general. Apparently, only a month behind, pretty astonishing. And the same thing goes really for the whole industry. Every manufacturer just needs to be applauded. Uh, I'm not going to stop clapping on video because that would hurt people's ears but seriously they have shown some real resilience over this time haven't they which I think is just amazing the GT3 then apparently they've signed off the last pre-production sample and production is about to begin which is really exciting they've also showed some designs for the decoration as well which is looking fantastic so now the expected date is early July apparently which isn't too bad considering as I was saying there's also a bit of an update on the fell as well it's supposedly proceeding quite well they've revealed the latest CAD drawings as you can see here and apparently tooling is about to begin shortly they're actually expecting to have the first fully working model by Wally this year so that's November quite amazing stuff but as with the GT3 they did seem to have a running sample available quite quickly which is very impressive they've also revealed that a full connecting rod will be available which connects all of the driving wheels together I believe uh, and they will be supplied which will allow you to run the model in a 484 configuration which is an absolutely brilliant idea I think because well as they said in their update email you'll effectively get two models for the price of one that's the kind of thing I really love to see a bit of ingenuity there which is really really cool Finally then, I'm going to revisit some of my videos from the past month to take a look at some of the polls and see how you guys responded to them. I love statistics, so this is probably always my favourite part of the new series. The first one then is from the Standard Class 4 video. I asked you guys whether retailers should be unpacking and testing new models in order to make sure they're working. Now there are two sides to this. On the plus side, if they've been tested, you know that you're going to get a working model. The downside though, obviously the model is no longer new. Somebody's opened the box, they've handled and used the model. 84% of you said that no retailers shouldn't be doing this and down in the comments section a lot of you indicated that you want to be the first person to open the box and handle the model and I get that that's completely reasonable in my opinion. I did get a few comments though from people living overseas saying that actually for you guys it's quite handy to have models tested because obviously the returns process in the event of a failure or something like that is quite lengthy and expensive. So it would seem that it would be best that retailers offer the option to have models tested, but it shouldn't be done as a matter of course. So that's obviously quite interesting, quite a good result there. Next up, the Hornby Wagons video. So I've now covered both Oxford and Hornby in my little competition to see which manufacturer makes the best wagons. I asked you to pick your favourite so far and here are the results. As you can see, Hornby wins by only 1%. It's very, very close. So stay tuned for the Backman video, which is going to be coming next month and hopefully we'll answer the question with the three major manufacturers. And maybe it would be nice to cover a few others such as Dapol. I didn't want to, but maybe I will. And Acura Scale as well. Apparently they make great wagon so we'll see how that goes next up then the motor video i tested really cheap motors that i bought directly from china and i compared them with identical or seemingly identical hornby ones now most people expected the genuine hornby motor to perform the best which is obviously quite reasonable given the massive price of them but as the video went on, it was clear that that wasn't really the case. And by the end of it, only 9% of you said that you were willing to spend more than £10 on a model railway motor in the future, which obviously is a little bit of a problem because the price of a new one from Hornby is over £17. So that's very, very interesting. And it does seem that a lot of those motors have now sold out and the prices have gone up very slightly. But hopefully they will make some more soon and they should be more readily available. I don't know if there's been a massive influx in sales or not, but I would guess so probably. Finally then, in my 4P video, I showed the amazing performance of the Hornby Fowler 4P tank. The performance was that amazing that I started to doubt myself. I was wondering whether my judgment was accurate because how can a model that is reasonably old perform so well? So to check whether I was just exaggerating or not, I put up a poll to find out how you guys would rate the performance. And as you can see, most of you guys did agree. 76% of you rated the Loco 5 star on performance and only 2% of you rated it less than 4 star. So thank goodness, I guess I'm not going crazy. It is such a good performer. 
Well, folks, that is all the news from this month. Not as much as normal, I don't think, but hopefully you still enjoyed it. As always, if there's anything that I didn't talk about and you wish I had, do let me know down in the comments and I will consider it for next month. For now, though, guys, please take care of yourselves. Look after yourselves. Look after your families if you've got them. If you're a child, make sure you check out the Hornby Kids Zone for lots of train-related activities, particularly if you like art and colouring because there's lots to do on there, so do check that out. For now, though, I will see you very soon with some more videos. Please look after yourselves, and I'll see you next time. All right, cheers, everybody.